record button. That means we're ready to go if it started. <laughs> so, how's your weekend going? Ugh, so much stuff. So many things. Yeah, so many things, dude. It's like this weekend needs to end already. <laughs> oh, yours sounds rough. Yeah, well, no, not even rough. Just uh, like a lot of stuff. Um, I did the Cage Warriors this weekend, mm-hmm. so a lot of running around, a lot of training too. Um, a lot of uh, dual bits responsibilities. I know. Our new uh, sponsor, Dual Bits, is powering this podcast by the way no big deal Mm. we're official we're international we get monetized we do yeah we're international uh uh influencers so (laughs) how we fucking yeah (laughs) (laughs) because you can't use dual votes in the ufc or in the u.s so sorry guys but for all our international viewers so fancy check it out all of our poppies Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of our Playboys, international. Our yes. International Playboys, Holler jet set and across the world. Make sure you uh, check out dualbits.com for all your betting needs. Yeah, there's uh, lots of fights to bet on, so why not use them? Exactly. Um, so we had a lot of stuff with that. We, um, I went to Cage Warriors. We watched fights. And then you had a lot of crazy stuff you were up to this week too right yes i wrecked myself (laughs) so since i'm no longer in the boot i um am going through this like very extensive list of activities that i've been dying to do for the past year Ah. while i've been laid up and i've uh been making been making headway checking checking boxes off like left and right so on thursday i went to a sexy floor dancing class oh where i i twerked and thrusted <laughs> bruised up my knees let's see it let's see that uh floor action <laughs> i can't i'm i'm hooked in i'm hooked in but i will i will at some point take a video of it when i get a little bit better and uh, a little bit <laughs> less embarrassed about it but actually i was pretty i was pretty impressed. i was like peeking myself in the mirror i was like you go girl okay so. you gotta do a before and after <laughs> like first day <laughs> i saw this really great video of a girl and it was like her first time being on a pole, like mm-hmm. doing the pole dancing class, and then three years later, she's doing all these cool tricks and looks really like cute and confident. But the first one, she just, <laughs> it looked like a middle school dance. Like she's just kind of gangly and unaware of her body, just and, like circling around the pole. Yeah, having having fun. You could tell she was having fun, but she was also seemed kind of self-conscious and then the next one she was just oozing sexuality and confidence so you got to do a video like that it was like it was really cool it was actually i wanted to tell you about it because it reminded me of like our little you know pole dancing stuff that we did last year yeah uh but this hurts a lot less Ugh. i mean it still hurts a little bit because you have to wear knee pads and mm. my knee pads weren't like exactly covering like the the inner oh the no words of my knees so i'm a yeah. little bit bruised not conditioned you know <laughs> haven't been getting you know Inside like kicked the for a while. Yeah. Oh, oh, that kind of condition. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of knee condition. Or the other one. I, was <laughs> like, I got this. But it was really fun because it's like dark and there's red lights and you just get to like really connect with your inner feminine. Cool. Super cool. Yeah, nice. I can't wait to see the video. Yeah. We gotta we you gotta show me what it looked like because I'm picturing yeah, <laughs> something weird. <laughs> no, it's really, really cool. I'm picturing crybabies. I mean, yeah, there were some. Yeah, there were okay. some. Yeah, okay. that was like the that was one of the cool downs. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, that was the one clip from the sexy red video that I'm really sad didn't make its way into it was the so final. Good. There were so many good outtakes. Uh, we've got to do an outtake. We've got to get that footage. We have to. He would give it to us, right? <sighs> I'm going to fucking ask him. <laughs> I'm going to ask him. Adam, I think you- it's property of uh, ESPN, and maybe they have, like, an ESPN Red, <laughs> ESPN X version that has all the naughty stuff on it, but basically they own all that footage. Huh. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask. Yeah, ask. Use your floor p- persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Get a floor routine ready, like... Can we please have a footage? 
bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of hair flipping. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shimmy, shimmy. Yeah. Um, yeah. When in doubt, twerk it out was the motto of the dance class. So nice. yeah, yeah, I'm going to just twerk my way to success. Yeah. I think it works for people. Yeah. For sure. Look for at sure. Nicki Minaj. Look at Cardi B. I know. Yeah. I know. Megan Thee Stallion. All successful by way of twerking. I mean, they... That French something. girl in, in the, the UFC. Cage, yeah. 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 She and uh, there's been a Their few. Brazilian girl at weigh-ins. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's been a few people who have twerked actually in their fights. Oh, uh, Jordan. Um, Jordan. Uh, what's his name? The the guy who did the. <laughs> the guy who did the um, the thing. The. The thing that you wanted to do with Dirty Dancing thing? Oh, yes. Yeah. What is his name? Is Jordan something? I got to look it up. Oh, I don't have my phone. Ah. Look, look up a uh, guy who he fought Patty Pimlet, and Patty Pimlet did the uh, did the tea bag on him. I know who you're talking <laughs> about. I, know you're talking about. I about. can't think of his last name. The Monkey King. Yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. Hold on. Also a successful twerker <laughs> in the UFC. So definitely onto something there. Jordan L- Levitt. Yes, Levitt. Jordan Levitt. Yes. I knew exactly what you were talking that guy. about. Pictured the face. Good yeah. Night, One of that. my favorite fighters. So I'm, I'm pretty disappointed in myself for not remembering the last name. But I remember that But <laughs> <laughs> It happens. Don't feel bad. Hey. Don't feel bad. Hate to see him go, but. I was saying walk away. To watch him. <laughs> Anything else you get up to? How did so did that destroy you? That was the thing. No. Oh. But um, after that, I went on like a, a four mile walk with oh. Grace around the lake because I haven't been able to do like you know long walks. And then yeah. um, Friday I did conditioning and I lifted. And then Saturday I did. I played tennis for the first time in my oh, life. Oh, I saw. Yeah. Um, and then right afterwards, I thought it'd be a great idea to go hike uh, on my first hike since I've had in like a year since mm. I've had my boot off. Um, hike up Cal's Mountain, and it ended up being like seventy-five degrees, and it was very, very steep. I don't remember nice. it being that steep, but it was kicking my butt. Yeah. <laughs> Grace and I made it up to the top. Took didn't a little break and then like didn't your doctor say take it easy the first month you have your boot off? I just got really excited. <laughs> and he, no, no, no. He said as long as you have your shoe and the orthotic in your shoe, mm. you can do activities. Okay, yes. all the activities because it seems like you did every activity possible. I did <laughs> everything. I He's, I told him. I feel like he said some activities and you said activities. Da da da. <laughs> he, listen, he said I could jump rope. I could run. I can walk, I can box, I can do all these things as long as I have the shoe on with the orthotic. Mm, okay. Cool. Yes. <laughs> and then I got home and Grace and I just like, we turned on the fights and then we just kind of like dozed in and out like yeah. all day. It was, we were both kind of like not in the best of shape yeah. from our long layoff. <laughs> well, then any of the fights, uh, were any of the fights good enough to wake you back up? Ooh, were Even they a pop, ever? A little pepping a step. Oh, my gosh. So some of the fights were really, really good. I mean, from top to bottom, there were just um, some really compelling fights. But I think I have to talk about the one that stood out to me most, like, just immediately was um, it was Zell Herber versus Prado. And this stood out to me, one, because Prado looks like a large baby. He has, like, really, <laughs> he looks like, like really big cheeks. Oh. Um. And then we have Prado, who's, it's uh, 155, but he's like 6'1", so he like really Ugh, stands out. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, that's a long frame. There's a lot of like space and open targets. And he ended up like doing really well, managing his range. And he started beating up uh, Zell. Zell Herbert really badly <laughs> and started blooding in his face. His eye was was shut. And what stood out to me the most is his corner gave him the best advice I've ever heard in a fight. Oh. And it was to the effect of, you don't need to see, just punch straight down the middle. Hey, there you go. There's but how do you g- know what straight down the middle is if you can't see it? Just straight down the middle. <laughs> just punch in front of your nose. You see, You know where your nose is. Go straight from there. <laughs> I was like, 
boxer, I think it's really actually really important that you be able to see in a fight. However, I mean, if you're in the middle of a fight and you're damaged and you're trying to win it, you're trying to squeak out a win, like that, that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, I've been in fights where I've been, I've been injured and I didn't want to like say anything. I didn't want to like bring any attention to it when I really should have communicated to like, eh, pretty sure my hand's broken. Yeah. Hey, this is thing. Cause then they could have given me the adjustments, but yeah, he, he couldn't like his eye was just, was done. It ended up being a decision. So he made it to the end, but mm. poor guy was just bloodied up. His eye was swollen shut and it was just hands down the best corning advice uh. I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, well, what would the other option be? Like, he's not going to stop fighting. No. Right? But did he continue to throw straight down the middle? He tried. <laughs> the, I feel the like the straight <laughs> down the middle is going to be off to the side a bit because you don't have <laughs> – you don't have uh, – Well, the thing that I was thinking was, okay, so when you when you start doing, like, uh, target practice, mm-hmm. when you're, like, shooting, you're you're supposed to keep your both eyes open, but it's, like, way better if you – close your eye it right actually, like directs it a little bit more but you still have to make those little adjustments because it'll be slightly off depending on which eye is closed mm-hmm. um so i was trying to you know just just think on that and be like you know what maybe it'll make it more precise but at the same time that's really difficult no especially if you're <laughs> used to fighting with two eyes <laughs> the depth perception of shooting especially when you first start you're like okay i've never shot before so i'm just gonna yeah. close one eye yeah. and and that'll make me hit the target. But if you're fighting and you've always fought with two eyes open, you might make it a little harder. It's <laughs> probably really challenging to do on the fly. You throw a kick, you think they're in front of you, they're actually like all the way across the cage. <laughs> he, he did his best. It was a tough fight. I think what got him in trouble, honestly, was he was the shorter fighter with the shorter reach. Mm. And he started just really trying to like reach with the leg kicks. Mm. So he was always just right there in range yeah you see that a lot with people I, I'm, I wonder um, I think it's because sometimes when your leg reach is a little longer than your arm reach you feel like kicking the leg is the only thing you can do against the taller opponent because they're popping you every time you try to come in with punches but then at the same time you kick that leg and you're not throwing anything behind it is really easy for them to come straight down the pipe punch you while you're on one leg and you're just kind of a sitting target there if you don't hide it behind punches so it's a really easy trap for people to fall into when they're the shorter opponent because that leg, their their lead leg, that's the closest thing to you. So you're like, man, I'm 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 down on points. Like they keep jabbing me every time I come in. I'll kick that. I'll just hit that. I'll get a point by hitting that. And then a lot of times, if you become predictable with that, they can start picking up on it, timing, eating the kick to punch you, or even checking it and punching you at the same time. So. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one to get around, especially if you're not used to dealing with someone that size, which you don't get a lot of tall people. Like we have um we have a, a girl we spar who's really tall. She says she's a one fifteen or we'll see. <laughs> Hasn't gone pro yet. But uh it's really hard to get around that range when you're not used to dealing with someone in your weight class at that range. It's just, a, it's a totally different game plan. You kind of have to wait a bit. You can't be greedy with the volume. You have to pull things out. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing for people to deal with. But um, when you say the thing about the corner advice, it made me think of that final round with, uh, with Moreno and Roy Val. And I know it's, you can't really judge people from the corner cam because they cut off half of the speech. But one thing that stood out between uh, Roy Val and Moreno, Moreno's corner was saying, do you want the belt back? You got to do this. You got to do it. Like, you got to go. You have to fight. And there wasn't specific advice, but they were trying to rally him. They were trying to get him excited and get him pushing past his limits. And then in the Roy Val corner, they were giving him more specifics. You have to throw this thing. You have to throw that thing. He's looking for this, so you have to do that. Work on this counter. And I'm wondering, what do you think gets you through a a tough spot, like a tough round? Like, do you like the motivational kind of uh, approach, or do you like more of the technical, do this, this, and this? A combination of both. 
And uh, that's but- <laughs> that's what I think too, but sometimes you lean towards one more than the other. I think I need technically sound advice. Yeah. I, I really do. I need somebody to like I'm already aware of what's going on. It's already <laughs> it is I'm already, already thinking about the fact that I want the belt <laughs> and it's not happening. <laughs> I'm like, help me get there. <laughs> I know Please. I'm not one in the belt right now. Tell me something I can <laughs> use. <laughs> Be specific. There's, um, so there, uh, I used to train with Rafael Cordero and I think he is a great motivator, mm. but he would never give exactly technically sound advice. But mm. like this man walked by you and like you wanted to do better. You just like wanted to impress him. But I would see him in the corner and I'd be like, that's, that that's not going to get them there. <laughs> it, it's not. And I mean, you're going to want to get there. You're going to want to get there, but you got to tell me how, like, it's yeah. like, you know, those people like get up. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks. I would love to. Uh, can you please be specific? Like yeah. give me some technically sound advice. Um, give me options because what I'm doing isn't necessarily working. So help me, mm-hmm. you know, that's what the corner is there for. That's what their job is. Um, that's what I'm trusting them to do. So it's just, yeah, I would prefer more technically sound advice. Yeah, and that's why I say you can't really judge uh, what the corners are actually saying from the corner cam because they could have been saying technical, 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 and then the camera, the UFC camera cuts to their feed, and they're like, and do you want it? <laughs> and everyone's like, well, tell them what to do, and they already did it in the first half of the yeah. of the cornering moment but at the same time you see a lot of corners where that's all they'll do they'll just go how bad do you want it get in there show them how show them who you are go in there and have fun do what you know you came here to do and it's just like waiting for instructions specific (laughs) i mean i'm i'm doing what i can i'm doing what i think i should if it's not working give me something else like that's i that's what I need you to do for me at the same time on the other end, you can have someone who's just super dry. Like whenever I see uh, Greg Jackson cornering and he's just like super dry, win or lose or um, uh, uh, Trevor Whitman, mm-hmm. super dry, win or, win or lose in the round, just like super dry. I feel like that might make me feel patronized, you know, like uh, is that the right one or is it patronized? Patronized potato potato. <laughs> one one means you're buying something from me. <laughs> and the other means I'm not buying what you're saying 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 to me. But um yeah, one will make me just feel like you're just saying what I wanna hear and it's pissing me off because you feel like I can't deal with what's really going on. And uh like I, I like to get a little bit of emotion behind it. Like a little bit of urgency, like, hey, that round was was pretty bad, <laughs> but you did good things. This is what you did well. We need more of that. Like, I, I like the realism, but also like the enthusiasm and feeling that the corner actually cares about what happens next. And they're not just there to kind of, uh, you know, handhold me to whatever happens. I've always found, and, and it's really hard to find because um, I, I found that coaches, I, I kind of rate how good of a coach sometimes they are on the ability to coach different fighters in mm-hmm. a different way, different fighters, the way that they need to be coached to bring out the best in them. And there are, there are some people that, that just can't do that. And mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that they're not good, but there are just some really like great coaches out there that have that ability and um it it's hard to find yeah and it's hard to uh do that when you bounce around too um it's uh it's part of the reason why people stay with bad coaches for so long because they get that uh that superstition that they need that coach to bring out the best of them even if the coach isn't actually bringing out the best of them you form these relationships and they figure out how to talk to you how to get through to you um and it's a it is a really hard to build type of thing so when i look at someone like brandon moreno i feel bad that he's had to switch coaches so many times because i feel like he might have been a little better if he just found the right coach sooner 
and was able to stick with him and they were able to work through all the game plan game planning and stuff together and figure out exactly what he needed to just be the best version of himself because it, it, it did look like he was a little overwhelmed in that fight against Ravel. Not overwhelmed, but just not as uh, dominant as he usually is. I, I mean, I was going for Moreno for the win. Yeah. What surprised me was, I, I, I have to, like, I have to give Rival credit where it's due, is he really turned it up. Mm-hmm. Like, he created momentum for himself. He was listening to his corner. He was creating more volume, more angles. And I think that's the best I've ever seen him. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, maybe it was Brandon not showing up the way he normally does, but also Rival stepped up in a way that I hadn't seen him before, in a way that, like, I didn't pick him to win before. Yeah. No, so. we uh, our dual bits picks were Ooh. not correct. They sorry. were, sorry, man. That's what, when both underdogs win, a lot of people lose money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> All of our bads. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Royval looked really good in that fight. Um, I, like, I wasn't sure because I kind of watched it after I saw the results. Mm-hmm. So I already had a skewed vision of what the fight was going to look like going in. But then as I'm watching the first and second round and then the third, I'm like, I don't know, man. This like, Moreno's doing pretty good. Royval's throwing a lot of volume, but Moreno's hitting with power. He's definitely landing the harder shots. He's stringing together those uh, punches to the kick combos really nicely. I think the... Um, I had a lot of rounds for Moreno. I, I feel like I would have been that uh, the Japanese judge, Junichiro. <laughs> <laughs> Junichiro, Junichiro, um, scoring at like 49, 46. But I can see how he got there. You know, I, I did think it was two and two going into the last round. I felt like Royval rallied. He did a lot. But I just, I don't know. I felt like Moreno just had more power in, in his shots that he was landing. And it didn't feel like he was ever in trouble. Like, he never got hurt. He never got wobbled. His head never got pushed back from a punch. And I felt like most of that happened with Roy Val, but he was still landing punches and punches. There was one moment where he, they both landed a huge overhand. Like, Roy Val landed like a step back cross, and then Moreno landed an overhand right before that. And I wasn't sure why he was backing up but it was because Roy Val landed with way more power he came in took him down and had that little brief moment of like craziness but aside from that it felt like Marina was doing most of the damage I he was landing really great low kicks he was landing really nice overhands but it it stopped working he kept mm-hmm. going back to that same setup that same combination and it wasn't always successful, and it would have been nice to see him just mix in a little bit more volume, mm-hmm. just to put a stamp on it, you know, because, it, I mean, at that level, it's it's such a tight game, you know. They they both brought it. They both showed up in, in really impressive ways, and it just, I would have liked to have seen him make those adjustments, and in previous fights, he did make those adjustments, mm-hmm. you know, and in this one, it just, it, it wasn't working as much as I think he hoped it would have. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I think that they got the winner right. You think so? I do. You said you were going for Moreno, though. I was going for him. Oh, but you were think, going for him before the fight happened. Yes. Okay, gotcha. But I think that the the judges, I don't think they were wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that sometimes it's really confusing. Are they looking for damage in power shots? Are you yeah. looking for volume? And there's just such inconsistency. It's really hard. But the way I saw it, I can see why they gave it to Roy Ball. Yeah. No, I thought it was just really close. It yeah. it was one of those fights where you can't be mad either way. Yes. Even though I saw the power in Marino's side, like everyone was telling him to go. You know, everyone was telling him more and more and more. And he could never pick a get into that next gear. And I'm wondering, because I'm I'm sure he trained out in altitude, but uh sometimes it still sticks with you. Sometimes you still have that altitude sickness. Sometimes you might get a little sick in Mexico City. It's notorious for that. Um 
but he didn't have that same pep in his step that he usually does a, as a flyweight. And I think a lot of people were seeing that as the fight went on. Uh, Roy Val was picking up pace, and it looked like Moreno just never got out of first gear. But the power was there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was it was a really good fight. Um, and I'm excited for Roy Val because he just lost to the champion, and now he's getting this second chance, uh, a second chance that a lot of people don't get. Uh, do you think he fights for the title next, or do you think he's still in line, but – Maybe next in line, like I mean, number two or three. <laughs> wouldn't it have given Moreno an opportunity to get the title next? Yeah, but it's not always the same on the it's other not, side. It's not the. So I don't know necessarily if it puts the next in line. I could argue that it would. Mm-hmm. Could, uh, absolutely, it was a great performance against another top competitor. To me, that was a title contention fight. Right. Um. The, the thing that worries me, though, is what I saw in Rival giving up his body in that fight is the same thing that's going to happen. You mean like you did on the floor the other day in your dance class? <laughs> <laughs> I can't twerk ah. in this seat. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Rival was like, take it. <laughs> yeah, he... Um, yeah, I, I just wonder if it's been enough time in between the fights. The image in my head. <laughs> Tell me, what do you think? Are you thinking of me twerking? You like I'm thinking of Roy Val twerking. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking of him just going, take me. No, I, I, I get you. He, he was wild a bit and left a lot of openings for someone as annoying as Pantoja is to grapple I'm with. Telling him you said that. No, he <laughs> mad. And, uh, you would never raise your elbows. No, never. God, no. No, that would <laughs> if be If you're it. within two feet of that guy, because oh. he will go zip, 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 and right on your yeah. neck right away. Um, he did, he, I felt like he fought uh, Moreno knowing that that wasn't as much of a threat. But Fair. continue. Fair. Continue about Rival giving up his body. <laughs> Tell me don't more. Don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> MMA wanna, fighters, we all give up our body. I want to hear more of your f- MMA fan fiction about <laughs> Roy Val. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, well, I never pictured him in that way, and now I can't help it. <laughs> well, you said it. I'm seeing him like. <laughs> Fingers through the cage, giving mm. me a little, little shimmy. Oh. oh wow, I'm getting excited over a there. A little bit excited. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he and he he had so much spunk in his post. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> he used my notebook if you <laughs> I need that. Uh, talking points. Oh. He had uh so much spunk in his post fight speech too. He was he was just like, I don't care about your questions. <laughs> I have answers that I prepared and these are what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Sometimes, man, so I still I think post fight speeches are amazing. It's it's an amazing moment and you know, you're like you're you're so excited, you're so hyped. And sometimes I wish people like maybe like did a little like, you know, like in the mirror, <laughs> you know, this is what I'm gonna say and just like, you know, played it out or like, mm. you know, bounced it off of their cornerman or their manager, their PR team, something yeah. like that. Cause sometimes I just feel like, man, just stop them. <laughs> just <laughs> No, you don't need to say Get that. Get Sandman out. That's not, that's not helping you. <laughs> Bring that's out it. the cane. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Um, yeah, and then I'm like, you know, people are like damn near concussed after their fights. They really shouldn't be like talking at all. They should be on their way to the medical tent. They say that a lot, but we, we still want to hear what they got to say. It's like when you take, uh, when you take the videos of the kids after they, uh, go to the dentist and they have the laughing gas. <laughs> <laughs> All these, all these fighters, they say the darndest things when they have CTE, fresh concussion. <laughs> Let's hear what they got to say. You know it's going to be what they're really thinking. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, it's. I get that, like, secondhand embarrassment that just, like, I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm so uncomfortable for them right now. Because there's so, so much. So uncomfortable. It's just so much. 
<laughs> There's just so much adrenaline, too. So it's not just that you're a little loopy, but you're also really happy if you won. You know, you're really pissed if you lost. And there's so much emotion that someone just trying to ask you a question can turn into something ridiculous. But I wasn't mad at Ravel's post-fight speech. I, th- I thought it was cute that he was trying to, like, be a personality. you know, Because <laughs> he seems like this chill, uh, you know, whatever. Like... <laughs> His nickname is Raw Dog. How chill do you really think he is? I, I mean, I feel like that's his all his split personality. Like I'm, my nickname is Overkill, but I'm pretty chill. But my alter ego in the cage is like, I'm mean, you know. Yeah. And I, that, that's <laughs> I'm gonna punch you. And I feel like that's that was his vibe. He seems really chill outside of fighting, but. Yeah, the post-fight speech, I think he's trying to get people excited about him being a character. I think he was just really excited. Yeah, and he's like, I'm I'm taking everything. What did he say? He said something like that. It was like, I'm taking everything for myself, but no one's going to hold me down anymore. Ah, that's what it is. (laughs) He must have been working hard on his get-ups. Yeah. Yeah. When I first heard it, I thought he meant literally. Oh. <laughs> or not literally, figuratively. I thought he meant no one's going to keep me from getting to the top, but he actually meant no one's going to get on top of me and not let me stand up. No, he, he's like me. He has terrible takedown defense. He just goes with it. Like, he goes with it because he has crazy, like, scrambling yeah. and stuff. So, yeah, he's just like, hey, <laughs> right into my trap. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I wanted to be on my back. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, I did like um, Brian Ortega's post-fight speech. There were some questions I had after that one. I was I, like, what are you being a dickhead about? I want to hear the translation. <laughs> because he, there was a moment where he said something in Spanish and half of the crowd laughed. So I'm like, oh, he's up here telling, uh, telling stand-up right now in Spanish. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> but I think he was just saying um, in the Spanish that he knew how to – Does he is he, like, fluent, fluent? Or yeah, is yeah. he? But oh, has yeah. he always been fluent? Yes. Okay. It seemed like he was a lot more casual in his Spanish version. Um, but he was just kind of telling – people what happened with the ankle and how it was just like oh shit (laughs) man when i saw him jumping up and down i was like boy you are not that athletic kind of build you should not be jumping up and down right now oh my heart jumped i (laughs) my heart jumped when when that ankle went out oh that body type the linky noodle yeah no 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 linky noodle body type from experience i roll my ankle anytime i freaking get out of bed yeah (laughs) It's so scary. I, and um, we had uh, the other guy who was on the card, a uh, young kid, Raul Rosas. He hurt himself somehow. They hours. said he got sick. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah, they ah. said he got sick. He probably had the street tacos. I don't know. That was a really weird one. Brush his teeth with the water. Because I like, I literally saw them post, like, you know, Dana White post, like, mm. in, in the corner, like, backstage uh, kind of thing. And yeah. they had just showed him walking in and just showed him like maybe starting his warm up I think it was and then the next thing you know the commentary is announcing that the fight is being postponed possibly till next weekend dang i was like what kind of sick does he have like yeah well i just heard it was uh, official that he's going to fight next weekend mm. but um yeah well it's easy to get food poison out there like some kind of bacteria thing yeah. because the water is not um, like the tap water. You're not supposed to drink it, but people who aren't from Mexico City will come and drink the water because that's what they're used to. Homeboy's Mexican. He should know better. But from where? Because I feel I like know, it's, I think he's from. I think he's like Mexican American. Yeah, yeah. He should. He doesn't know, have that life. They should have told him. Well, I feel like he kind of just is. is very nonchalant too he's just like oh whatever brushing his teeth in the water every, even though everyone told him not to and oh, i'll be fine i'm mexican and then fight night not that kind of mexican. <sighs> yeah mm-hmm. if you're throwing up like violently throwing up you're not allowed to fight like i'm sure if he was sick he would probably still try to fight but yet, if you can't if you can't make yeah. it a few minutes without throwing up or if pooping the yourself, catches you like acting yeah. funny back there. Yeah, it's a sweating, wrap. It's a wrap. looking, looking 
gross. <laughs> it hits you really quickly too. Uh, when you get it, I told you I got sick in, uh, in Tulum and that was horrible. It was just as, as soon as I was flying home. So I lucked out, but yeah, if you come down for fight week or if, even if you stay for a while and then, yeah, it's really easy to get sick in those places when you're not used to going through all the precautions of not ingesting water that goes through the taps. So yeah. per kid, but yeah. now he knows. And now he'll be <laughs> now he'll make sure he doesn't do that next time. Um, but going back to Ortega, he did a little jump. He rolled his ankle and it looked like it messed with him for a little bit. Um, but then he said in his post fight speech, he was like, I know God was with me. <laughs> he wasn't going to let us go out like that. And I'm like that's that's. That's good that you had that faith in <laughs> that faith that God wanted you to win and not Yair. Because <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Yair was probably thinking the same thing. Yeah, he's like, oh, God God made that ankle roll. <laughs> yeah, he even Thanks. had his mom bless him before he went into. Oh, like, did he? I think that's so sweet. I like, I think it's so sweet when people are just like family people. You yeah, know? yeah. I, just, I love that. He, did she do the egg thing? No, she just. Oh, Okay. Oh, on the walkout. Yeah. Oh. I don't <laughs> what know what it, happened at home. I don't know. That would be really funny if someone did the <laughs> egg thing. Like, you know what I'm talking about? They, like, crack the egg and then tell your future or whatever. You that know, heard of that? like Santeria. That's, like, not Catholic. Oh. Yeah, that's, like, voodoo-ish. I just thought it was Mexican. <laughs> A certain type of Mexican, yeah. Oh, okay. They also, like, uh, pee in jars and put, like, screws and nails and ribbon and hair and stuff like that. Yeah, Ooh. they do all sorts of stuff. Bury it. Yeah. I wouldn't put that past Yair's mom to be all into that stuff. Ooh, I'm I, telling. I would feel, well, no, I don't know her, but I just feel like a mom would do whatever she needed to do for her baby. Oh, for sure. My mom would do some voodoo for her baby, and she's right. a uh, straight-up Christian. Yeah. She she don't play. <laughs> she don't play with the dark arts, but she will for her baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything for the baby that's my name at my household i'm the baby and i'm old as shit <laughs> yeah i can tell by the way you're treated in your family that you're definitely the baby she can do no wrong she's the she's the don't special be jealous <laughs> no i was the oldest so i have like serious like oh y'all all have issues <laughs> yes yes i do <laughs> Yes, I do, Angela. He's like, you didn't treat me like that. <laughs> My brother got all, like, the new cool things. Oh. He always got the nice treatment. He got everything. They, like, I was their guinea pig. Well, Yair, I feel like he's the firstborn. Because I think he's the baby. You think he's the baby? I feel I, like he is the baby. I feel like we need to look that up. I feel like. Well, I But mean, the firstborn in, like, uh, Hispanic culture is always, like, the firstborn son. Like, they're treated like are babies, baby siblings. All the males are. Oh, all of them? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, Must they, be nice. They, they <laughs> take care of their males. Yeah. The mothers and the sisters have to take care of them. Must be nice. Yes. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did not have God on his side. No. <laughs> oh. With that, with that being said, no. But, you know, like, that's all faith is. It, it helps you be the best you. Is I think that's what it is. It is not uh, one person saying God likes you better than, or God likes me better than you. It's one person saying, okay, and we're, we're going to get through this and I'm going to be the best version of myself. And if Ortega had let that ankle thing take his head out of the game, he wouldn't have done what he was able to do, which was get back in it, uh, work his way to getting on top of Yair and just asserting his dominance. And how good did he come out in that second round? An ankle roll and getting darn near finished. Clobbered, yeah. Almost finished in the first round, and mm. he came back out like that. That yeah. was impressive. Super impressive. That's, um, yeah, that's like the... Most impressive thing I think that somebody can do inside mm -hmm. the cage, you know, it's, um, it's easy when you're winning, it, it's really hard to face adversary adversity, um, and come back the way he did. Yeah. It was very, very impressive. I was very happy for him. Yeah. It, and, um, I, it makes me wonder because he's, he was saying that he had to get his, his, uh, life together. He was just being kind of a knucklehead, um, 
makes me wonder what happened. I, it makes me wonder a lot. I mean, <laughs> I, I like think we're know. all wondering the same thing. <laughs> where does where does our girl fit in this? What happened? She, uh, she was in the stands. Was she? She was. She was a guest <laughs> fighter on that card. <laughs> oh. I was wondering about that. Was she with her new boyfriend? I don't know. I mm. didn't actually see her in the crowd. Like with, it. they just like panned in on her. Oh, uh, just yeah. casually panning over mm. the ex. Interesting. Yeah, very, creating storylines. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I wonder what he did. Knuckleheads. Yeah, well, know. maybe it made him a better person after. You know, sometimes losing. people got to go through things. They got to they gotta mess up real bad. Mm -hmm. They got to screw up their life, you know, burn <laughs> the bridges, burn everything down, and then they can rebuild themselves. And now he the could ashes. be a better man for someone else. Yep. <laughs> Have you ever fixed a man for someone? I'm great at fostering men and oh, helping them man. find new homes. Yeah. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I've, only, I've only had a couple. Uh, uh, <laughs> a couple repaired men in my life, but... No, sucks. No. <laughs> it it you know sucks when you see really how happy good. their new girlfriend is. <laughs> oh, no, none of them are actually happy that I can tell. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, I, I left So you haven't her. repaired any. I haven't. I no. just, I fostered them. Oh, you fostered them. Yes. What's the difference? Just took care of them until their next. Until you just, next. okay, you just, like, let them. Yes. Stay shitty. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not dealing with this. <laughs> let, let, we're not continue with on this. their path of havoc. This is not your home. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was nice for a few months. Time to move. It, it's <laughs> no longer. You won't get your deposit back. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm keeping that. Uh, I'm keeping that. You went all over the floor. Um, what do you think is next for Ortega? Now that he got that big win, because he's still pretty up there in the rankings. Yeah, he is. Even though he, I think it was a year, year and a half yeah. that he hadn't been active. And that's why I was, you know, going with Yair for my mm -hmm. bet, for my pick. Yes. Yeah, because same. Yair's been, he's been doing well. I mean, minus the, the Volk fight. And I mean, that's, that's a tough fight. No shame in losing that one. Yeah. But I just thought that he was, you know, he, he just had a lot more momentum than Brian Ortega would, which I was wrong. Yeah, dude, he <laughs> proved all of us wrong. And I love when people do that. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's, I, I, I love being wrong when someone's counted out because um, it just shows that they did get their shit together. They buckled down and, and fixed whatever wasn't working in their previous fights. And um, it wasn't just the layoff, but it was the performances that we've seen of his versus Yair. It seemed like Yair had a good uh, idea of how to beat him. He could be aggressive. He could be good on the feet. He could be safe on the ground. And once Ortega decided to take the fight into his own hands, he was able to make it happen, get the takedown, you know, like stay on top. It was uh, it was really cool to see that all that hard work paid off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good job. Guess we're just going to have to do better next time with our dual bits picks, but I'm not mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. they put their money on it, but... Oh, whoops. Sorry, guys. Our bad. Well, um, there were a couple of fights on the on the um, prelims, too, that I was really excited about. Um, uh, is, I always fuck up the R names on <laughs> with the Brazilians, but Hayani Barcelos versus yeah. uh, our our little homie, Christian, Christian Quinones. Um it sucks because it was kind of I I like both of those fighters. I like one because we know his brother, and then being able to see him get into the UFC after Taco was pretty cool. And he had like this big um, entry fight into the UFC at UFC Paris, and so I was like, "Oh, Christian Quinones, that's awesome!" But then he's fighting this guy who I just think is so underrated. And Hayoni Barcelos, he every time he gets out there, it's a fight of the night type of fight. Um, he's just good everywhere, his striking, his wrestling. His wrestling is insane, and his grappling. And so we saw a lot of crazy scrambles in that fight, a lot of, like, big moments. And, yeah, it was, it was that was my fight of the night pick, for sure, before the main event, at least. <laughs> it did get a performance bonus, didn't it? Did it? I don't – I think um, – I think 
Who got the fight of the night? I think it was Ortega. No, it wasn't Ortega. I think uh, the main event got fight of the night. Maybe. But if not, Maybe. that one should have. Yeah, I, I thought that they would end up getting a performance bonus, but I guess not. There were just some awesome fights on the whole card. Yeah, no, it was a no really stacked didn't. stacked card. Hopefully they kick them something, the, the both of them, because that was a really nuts fight. And I was just like, the first maybe couple minutes, I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be. And then they started going. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, 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 who's winning? Oh, my goodness. And then eventually, uh, Honey was able to get the submission second round. And yeah. It was an awesome, awesome fight. There were some crazy grappling, wrestling exchanges. Yeah. Those scrambles were just so fun to watch. Yeah. They yeah. really were. It was very impressive. And he's like at that size where it's still like really speedy. It's hard to keep track of what's going on unless you are well versed in the knowledge of grappling like we are. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we worked on that throw. Oh, I do not know what that one is. I'm going to ask about that one on Saturday. That little weird one he did where uh, uh, Christian was on his back and Barcelos, like, wrapped around and kind of popped him over the knee. Mm -hmm. That one was It was very sick. nice. It was very, really nice. slick. Got uh, mentions by all of the commentators. Like, oh, that was slick. Um, also... Uh, the strawweight fight that happened, I was happy for Yasmin just because she's coming off of that big knockout. And we talked about that. And the fans can just be so horrible to you, especially when a lot of people are rooting for you and then you just lose a fight. Yeah. It happens. It's, <laughs> I've said it before, in in fighting and in a lot of things, but in fighting specifically, you are only as good as your last fight mm. and you are only as relevant as what's next. It is, it's a very hard way to live life at times. Yeah. It really, really is. Um, it can, it can really gobble you up and you can get lost in that kind of energy and that way of thinking. Uh, but you know, she seemed to have stayed focused. She, you know, went back to what she was good at. She asserted herself, and she had a great performance. Yeah, and she didn't uh, get too wild. And that was the one thing that I noticed in all of her fights up until the one where she got knocked out. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, she, would, she would get hurt being aggressive. Yes. Like, she would come in real hard. And, yeah, when it lands, it works. But the problem is your momentum is making – all of your opponents punches harder. Mm -hmm. And if you're coming in wild with your like not your chin up, but just like wide, then it's easier for somebody to counter you because you're coming in so wild and aggressive. Yeah. And she was very technical in this fight. She still had that same pop, that same power, and it really seemed to throw Sam Hughes off of all of her offense. Like she was afraid to get in there, <laughs> you know? Yeah, she she was having trouble from what I could tell from Yasmin's speed, mm -hmm. the power. Yeah. Um, and she just, Hughes wasn't making the proper adjustments. She, she was trying to strike with somebody that had better striking with her instead of, you know, maybe trying to change the momentum, get her up against the cage, like stifle her a bit, take a little bit of wind out of her sails. And she just wasn't able to. Yeah. And it, and it's, uh, it was it was weird because every now and then Hughes would land something clean, but there was no power on it. You could tell she already decided that it wasn't going to work before yeah. she threw it. So it was like, why are you throwing that then? Like she landed a, a clean like push kick to, to Yasmin's stomach and literally just kind of bounced off of her and didn't try to actually push her away or or you know, create distance or even try to hurt her with it. And I felt that, like that was the same with everything she was landing. She wasn't believing in it. And I think if you feel those first couple of punches and they're harder than you expected, they're faster than you expected, then it's hard to get that, uh, to get that confidence in your own abilities. Sure. That's why Ortega had to rally himself halfway through the round because he's like, no, no, no. Like, we're not going out like that. And it's hard for people to be able to do that, um, especially when, I don't know, they just don't believe in it. So it was, uh, it was a little, uh, I, I did feel a little bad for Sam Hughes because it seemed like the game plan was there, but 
there wasn't any uh, belief in it. Like when she would get double unders, she would it would get broken right away because she wasn't really grabbing for it. She wasn't really squeezing for it. When she'd land a check hook, it would bounce off of Yasmin's head. And it was just, I, I don't know. You could tell that it, there was a mental battle going on there too. Absolutely. I, I did notice that. Like anytime I saw her kick the leg, it just looked like it was, she was just trying to touch. Just bouncing off of her. Yeah. <laughs> bouncing off yeah. her muscles. No, I did see that. Yeah. And, and that's a tough place to be in a fight. Yeah, especially, uh, you know, enemy territory, especially when you might have been thinking this is what everyone wants. This is what they expect. This is why they made this matchup. And then it starts playing out the way that the storylines are in your head. It's, it's hard no, being a fighter, awful. man. <laughs> it really no, it is. it is awful. It, it, it always makes me wonder what's worse, being the person who's brought in to lose and then you're losing or being the person who's brought in to win and then you're losing. Because it's always like, it, it just sucks either way. <laughs> no, both suck in different ways. Yeah. Um, I feel like when you're going into enemy territory and you're being brought in as an opponent, I feel like it's it's a little bit easier. But in, in that in that sense, it's also easier to like kind of let yourself off the hook mm-hmm. for not performing well yeah which is it's all that's awful in itself yeah it's it's a really hard internal battle and i'm i'm happy that a lot of people are taking more time to like work on the mental side of things yeah you know because it's it's a big gap i know i struggle with my own stuff everybody does uh but it it really is a key piece and i feel like it's neglected Mm -hmm. oftentimes especially by like younger fighters you know when you get a little bit older a little bit wiser, you start, you know, trying to look into things and, and figure stuff out a little bit more than just being like a young brazen fighter. Yeah, it's easier to be stupid when you're young, too. You don't have all the trauma built up, the PTSD from losing multiple times. You just got in there. You're like, I'm going to be champion of the world. I'll be the youngest champ, and I'm going to fight twice and become champion. And then when it starts not playing out the way you expected it to, that's when the doubt starts creeping in, and that's where the bad thoughts and the things that can take you out of your game while you're fighting creep in. So um, I feel like Hughes felt a little bit of that in that fight, and you didn't see uh, as good of a fighter as she usually is, but I still feel like it would have played out similar, where uh, Yasmin would have been the the stronger, faster uh, striker in the fight and she looked really good with her takedown defense too like there was never a point where I thought Hughes was close to really getting her down mm-hmm. but yeah it was a good fight um I think we should address this weird package on the table oh that's so weird I don't know where that came from but perhaps in our exclusive content I think it's about that time <laughs> alright we'll see you on the other side bye, bye.